Madam Speaker, the United States of America is an exceptional nation whose unique core premise is that declared conviction that we are all created equal and that each of us is endowed by our Creator with the unalienable right to live. Abraham Lincoln called upon all of us in this chamber to remember those words of America's founding fathers and, quote, their enlightened belief that nothing stamped with the divine image and likeness was sent into the world to be trodden on or degraded and imbruted by its fellows. He reminded those he called posterity that, quote, when in the distant future some man, some factions, some interests should set up a doctrine that some were not entitled to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that their posterity, that's us, Madam Speaker, that their posterity might look up again to the Declaration of Independence and take courage to renew the battle which their fathers began." Unquote. Madam Speaker, the sincerest purpose of the Born Alive Protection Survivors Protection Act is to renew that noble battle to respect and protect those little fellow human beings among us who are this moment being trodden on and degraded and imbruted by their fellows. Not long ago, in the, in the land of the free and the home of the brave, authorities entered the clinic of Dr. Kermit Gosnell and found a torture chamber for little born-alive babies that defies description within the constraints of the English language. The grand jury report at that time said, quote, Dr. Kermit Gosnell had a simple solution for unwanted babies. He killed them. He didn't call it that. He called it ensuring fetal demise. The way he ensured fetal demise was by sticking scissors in the back of the baby's neck and cutting the spinal cord. He called it snipping. Over the years, there were hundreds of snippings. Ashley Baldwin, one of Dr. Gosnell's employees, said she saw babies breathing, and she described one as two feet long that no longer had eyes or mouth, but in her words was making like this screeching noise, and it, quote, sounded like a little alien. And now in recent days, Madam Speaker, numerous video recordings have been released that demonstrate that Kermit Gosnell was just the tip of the iceberg of the abortion industry's unspeakable cruelty to these little children of God. The veil has now been pulled back, and all of us now see the walls behind the abortion industry and the, the horrifying plight of its little human victims, who we must not forget are the least of these, our little brothers and sisters. Our response as a people and a nation to these horrors shown in these videos is vital to everything those lying out in Arlington National Cemetery died to save. The Born Alive Abortion Survivors Protection Act, Madam Speaker, protects little children who have been born alive. No one in this body can obscure the humanity and the personhood of these little born alive babies, nor can they take refuge within the schizophrenic paradox Roe versus Wade has subjected this country to for now more than 40 years. The abortion industry has labeled, labored all these decades to convince the world that unborn children and born children should be completely separated in our minds that while born children are persons worthy of protection, unborn children are not persons and are not worthy of protection. But Madam Speaker, those who oppose this bill to protect born alive babies now have the impossible task of trying to join born children and unborn children back together again and then trying to convince all of us to condemn them both as inhuman and not worthy of protection after all. To anyone who has not invincibly hardened their heart and soul, Madam Speaker, an honest consideration of this absurd inconsistency is profoundly enlightening. Because you see, this country has faced such paradox and self-imposed blindness before. There was a time that our own House rules banned any discussion or debate in this chamber about the effort to end human slavery in America. 
But Madam Speaker, that debate did come, and with it came a time when the humanity of the victims and the inhumanity of what was being done to them became so glaring, even to the hardest of hearts, that it moved an entire nation of people to find the compassion and the courage in their own souls to change their position. And now to this generation, Madam Speaker, that time has come again. Gentlemen.